Are you in school? Are you out of school? Or what stage of life are you in now? Uh, figuring it out. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Just like everybody else driving for Uber. My show is called Death, Sex, and Money, and it's about... Death, Sex, and Money. Huh? Death, Sex, and Money, yes. <laughs> That um, sounds so scary. Well, it's it's actually it's about the things that everyone that everyone goes through, um, but that, but that we have trouble kind of talking about. You're not gonna put this on TV, huh? Hello. Hi, Ahmad. This is Anna. You just confirmed yes, my pickup. Yes, ma'am. I'm yeah. Coming. Yeah, yeah. I just have a quick question for you. I'm a radio reporter, and I'm doing interviews with Uber drivers while I take rides today. Um, are, are you open to answering just a few questions about the kinds of conversations you have with passengers while you drive? Like, what kind of questions you going to ask? Just kind of like, um, you know, why you drive and what it's like driving around and, and the kinds of people you meet and sorts okay. of conversations yeah, you have. No problem. Yeah, no problem. Okay, cool. I'll see you in a few minutes. Okay. Bye. Last month, producer Katie Bishop and I took Uber ride after Uber ride all around the Bay Area. Hello. Hi, Anna. How are you doing? We rode in the back seat and turned drivers' cars into recording studios. Why are those so big, big microphones? You're scaring me now. <laughs> Uber's been in the news a lot lately, particularly its leadership and corporate culture. But I wanted to know more about the drivers. And what keeps them on the road? I want to take my wife to Spain, so I started doing this. I didn't want to just sit home. And I have money when I need to buy something for my little son or for my house. We also heard about the downsides of driving for Uber. In order to make full-time money, you have to work like 11 to 12 hours. I drive more at nighttime, so I know how to handle the drunk people. There's a lot of competition. And, you know, it's kind of difficult to get a, a ride sometimes. With Uber, you order up a car, and all of a sudden, you're alone with a stranger. And over the 10, 15, 20 minutes you spend together, conversations can get surprisingly personal. We had a pretty bad experience with parents. Like, you know, did not get enough love when, I, when we were younger. Everyone has a story about what happened in their lives that got them driving for money. I was working in mortgages 2008, lost my job. I'm like the jack of all trades. I've worked with uh, people like Justin Bieber. No way. Before I worked in the restaurant, the Mexican restaurant. When you first got here, you had a different job? Yeah, pizza. Pizza? The little pizza, yeah. This, this job is better because this job, pizza don't talk. <laughs> That's what led us to a grocery store parking lot, standing around with microphones out, headphones on, waiting for a mod. I think this is a mod. Yeah. Hi, how you doing? You know, this is strange, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so how long have you been driving Uber? Um, one and a half year. Uh-huh. And why'd you start? Um... I just tried it because uh, I thought it's more money in the Uber. And how many hours a week do you do it, generally? Um, when I started, I was working like 70 hours. and now, 70? Yeah, 70 hours. Uh-huh. And now I'm doing like 50 to 55 hours. Like on a really good week, what's yeah. the most that you've made? Um, I have made $2,500 a week. Wow. before and right now I'm just making like fifteen hundred dollars maybe like twelve hundred dollars what brought you to the Bay Area originally I just moved from Pakistan so when I moved here I had an uncle here in Union City so mm -hmm. I was living with him for for a year and, and what kind of work were you doing back then I was working for an ice cream store uh -huh. ice cream store and and the cloth store, that was a cloth store over there. So you were working in, like, retail? Yeah, retail. Sounds like you probably are making a lot more money as an Uber driver than you did at those jobs. Uber, like, if I am doing eight hours job in, a, in any other place, I'm making the same money. The thing is, like, the Uber, 
I go for like 12 hours, 14 hours. Even I have worked like before 28 hours throughout. So, really? Yeah. Why did you do that? That's like, a lot of hours yeah, in a row. <laughs> I know, but like when you are new here, you you see the people like, hey, these people are better than me. So I, I do that like I have to make some more money. Uh-huh. Do you often talk with your riders or are you quiet? Before I was, I used to talk a lot uh, with the riders, but right now I'm, I, I try to be quiet. Why did you change? Because the people uh, in Pakistan we have a uh, we have a like a thinking that uh, American people they are very nice, they are very ge uh, generous, even more than our people. So that's why I was used to talk a lot with the people like. Uh, I thought you guys like to talk more, and then I realized now they are kind of different people, not not that kind of generous. So uh, your your opinion of Americans has shifted. Have shifted, yeah. Is that because of interactions you've had, or because yeah, of with the interaction uh, with the people interaction. Oh really? So, yeah, I realized that. Like you, because back then I had a very good opinion about the American people, like in general. I mean, they are very kindly or whatever, you can say. So now it has changed. A little bit, not too much. Is it? Is your life here in the Bay Area, is it like what you imagined when you decided to come? No, no. Um, I wish I, before moving here, I would have come to America to see things, how, how the things are. Then I would, I would choose, like, if I want to move here or not. But I did the wrong thing. I just packed my whole luggage and came to America, and I said, like, fuck, this is not, it's not, it's not a good life, like how I imagine. It wasn't just drivers new to California who told me life here wasn't what they expected. A driver named Matthew is from here, and 10 years after graduating high school, he's trying to make enough money to stay. He's worked as a server at a grocery store and is trying to break into coding now. He's been driving for Uber since October. Like for me and all my friends, it's just like nobody's making it. <laughs> Everybody's in debt. Like uh, so all my friends that decided to go for the four year and they didn't really come for money and they pulled out student loans. They just reeling from it. Like they're not doing any better than I am. And I didn't go that route at all. What'd you do right after high school? Uh, I did try and go to DVC. I went there for about a year or two. And, what, what's uh, that? Diablo Valley College. It's uh -huh. like a community college. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah, I just never really figured out exactly what I wanted to do until it was a little too late. I did try and take uh, coding stuff at that school. And about two weeks in, I was like, I, I can teach myself more at home alone in one day than I've learned in this class in two weeks. So I just decided to drop out of that class and just do it on my own. Have you had somebody who has like you go to for advice when you're trying to figure out next steps? Yeah, I totally have a, uh, I'm someone's Padawan. He's taken me under his wing. He's uh, kind of a friend that I met through a friend, and he's in the coding business. Padawan, what's that a reference to? Star Wars? I should know that. Jedi Sorry. And Padawan. Sorry, God, that's <laughs> embarrassing. Um, and does he know that that's how you refer to him? Yeah, or 100%. He uh huh. And what's like, have you had a, a conversation? with a passenger that it, that like you think back on has there been anything that's like a moment where you're like wow that changed the way I thought about something um there's definitely been a, a bunch of tiny ones it's more fascinating to realize all these different people have different destinations kind of thing like I'll talk to them and I'll drop one person off that's going to uh like say like they're attending a wedding or something and they bring that that energy and that vibe kind of into the car and then 15 minutes later they're gone and somebody gets in and you're driving them to like their mom's grave i've totally done that wow it's crazy so you get these different energies that come into the car and you just kind of like oh that's awesome you're going to a wedding that's so cool and the next person gets into the car and they're having the worst day ever and they're just kind of staring out the window Okay, I, I sell cemetery. I'm a family service counselor. Really? And I sell. Uh, I also sell uh, solar. Solar? Yeah. Mile. So I'm. Uh, I can sell mo almost anything, despite the accent. This is Evelyn. She's been driving for Uber for about a year, twice a week or so, for extra money. 
Do you, and you sell like cemetery plots? Yes, to cemetery, families? family service counselor. Can I ask you about what that's like? I'm What's that like? It spooked me the first time. The first time I went to the cemetery because I'm a little bit scared, you know, that kind of stuff, the spirit uh, kind of stuff. But I gotten used to it. Yeah. Do you primarily are you selling to people who are planning ahead, or are you selling to people who already who both? Are, uh huh. Both pre need and at need. Oh, that's pre what it's called. Yeah, pre need when you're planning. Uh huh. For your family or for yourself, at need in, in is uh, when somebody's already passed away. I imagine it feels really different when it's pre need or at need. Uh, it's like a different experience. It's it's, uh, it's almost the same thing. It's just a lot of paperwork. Uh-huh. Uh, I've been more into real estate side, uh, actually. Uh-huh. Uh, when the real estate market went down, you know, uh, I slowed down. I lost some properties, too, so... So you got hit... hit feet, turn right onto Harrison Street. Hit sort of with the with the downturn and the foreclosure crisis? Correct, uh -huh. correct. Uh-huh. Yes. Was it investment properties that you lost? Uh, everything. Everything? Yeah, everything. Oh. So have you been sort of rebuilding since then? Yeah, rebuilding financially and rebuilding life, mm -hmm. you know. When you say you lost everything, what do you mean? Lost uh, my houses. Houses. Oh. Houses. <laughs> oh. Yes. Income, that kind of stuff. Yeah. You know, and children are growing up. It was a hardship. It was, it was a traumatic uh, experience in my life. I imagine. Because I have children with me, you know, I have my grandchildren with me, but hey. Life is uh, God is good. To stay on yeah. Harrison Street. Hmm. Are you? Do you have a spouse? Uh, divorced. Divorced. Yes. I'm so divorced. you're you were single woman, navigating all of that. Yeah, navigating the Uber too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Expert navigator. <laughs> huh. What helped you when it was the, like the scariest? What, what helped? helped me? Yeah. I think my church, uh, my church. Uh, that's that's when uh, I turned to God. Yeah. God has reason for everything. Do you ever go back to where your old houses were to look at them? Oh yeah, all the time. Yeah, my children go pass by and drive by. How does it feel to look at it? Yeah. I just miss my plants. Yeah. Because I, I love plants, you know. I said, oh, look at my lemon. There's still a lot of, us, a lot, a lot of fruits. Does someone, 800 feet, keep left to continue on Derbos Avenue. Does someone live in the house? Yes. Now? Yeah, it's also Filipinos that bought the house. <clears throat> I want to go back to flipping houses. It didn't spook you? It didn't scare you after no, going through this? No, you know, this, this life, it's all a part of life. What you going to do? You're just going to lay down there and take everything now. Learn how to fight. I learn how to fight. Coming up, more conversations from the backseat of an Uber. Tell me how to pronounce your first name. Mm, in Nepali accent, you call it Madan. Madan? Uh-huh. So it's, okay. But with American, though, I go Madden. <laughs> <laughs> Man. I love it. I love it. <laughs> It's that time of year when we start to get emails in our inbox about life after college and all the questions about adulthood that it brings up. In the best case scenario where one is able to find an internship and consequent employment, then what? Jesus sent an email from London. You essentially buy a car and drive to work, driving to work to pay for your car. The subject line of Jesus' email was, what makes something worth it? That's a question a lot of you have weighed in on as we've been collecting your stories about student loan debt and how it's affected big decisions in your life. We are working on that episode now. It's going to come out later this month. You've also been sending in pictures of your debt, a picture of what you owe. You can see some of what's come in on our Facebook page or on Twitter with the hashtag student loan snapshot. You can send your pictures to deathsexmoney at wnyc.org. You don't have to include your face, but include your hand to remind us that there's a human connected to that number. And while we work on that next episode, if you, like Jesus, are going through a big life transition as spring turns to summer, 
Remember our Spotify playlist that has anthems of change that we built together last year. Let that be your soundtrack. Look for a link on our Facebook page. Hey, podcast listeners. Hey, podcast listeners who are also women. WNYC is hosting a podcasting festival just for women. It's called Work It, and it's happening over three days, October 3rd through 5th, at the Ace Hotel in downtown L.A. Learn from the women hosting and producing shows like Radio Lab, This American Life, Call Your Girlfriend, and check out live tapings of Recode Decode, Death, Sex, and Money, Another Round, and Two Dope Queens. Get tickets now at workitfestival.com. That's W-E-R-K, itfestival.com. Hello. How are you? Good. This is my producer, Katie. Yeah, how's it going, Katie? This is Death, Sex, and Money from WNYC. I'm Anna Sale. And this is Jeremy. He drives Uber part-time so he and his wife can save up to buy a house. I do it on my days off and, you know, evenings... Do you, what's your other job? I'm an engineer at eBay. Really? Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it's a very expensive town to live in. You know, I should have bought three years ago when I first started doing it, but I didn't. I waited. Now it's kind of like I'm, I'm racing to catch it, but I will never catch up now. So how long have you lived in the Bay Area? That's another little twist to this story as well. So I, I actually live in Colorado, and I, I'm flying, I fly here for, for my job. And I, I have a... I rent a place with my brother. So the, the, while I'm here, I'm making money on my spare time so we can buy that house. So how often do you get to see your wife? Well, I'm going home next week. So I'll go home uh, Wednesday morning and I'll come back Saturday night. Because that's uh, I do that about every other month. Do you have children? Yeah, i got four. You have four children? Yeah. So I was thinking, I was like, gosh, when do you see your family? Yeah. But your family is not here, so you're yeah. free to work. Yeah, exactly. So that's, you know. Yeah. How long do you think you will be doing this? Uh, I told my wife I wanted to move this summer because I was like, you know, we'll just find something, you know, wherever it is, yeah, like just to rent in, in the interim. But like for sure next year, I want to find something to buy. And if not, then sorry, eBay, I'm going to go back to Boulder. As we talked to drivers over two days, it became clear that all of them are in some kind of transition. Uber was no one's plan A. Hello. Hello, ladies. How are you? Doing good. This is Madden. Madden. He started driving after nursing school didn't work out. I was unsuccessful on that. I tried it twice. Uh huh. I couldn't make it. So this is the only choice: past money. Because I wanted to do something and be something. Yeah. Well, you said, what did you say, money? Pa past? Pa fast. Fast money. Yeah. And where did you grow up? Uh, actually, I am from Nepal. Uh-huh. Yeah. I studied abroad there in college. Oh, did you? Yeah. Oh, wow. I lived in uh, Chabil, outside of Kathmandu. No way. Yeah. It's, it's so nice to meet, like, you know, American people who had visited Nepal because they have much more broad idea. You know, like, like, you know, most of the American people, they don't visit outside. Yeah. But it's really nice to meet someone who has already visited Nepal. Yeah. Oh, and why did you choose to come to the U.S.? Uh, because my dad, he's uneducated, to be honest, and he's a farmer. So he was thinking more like, you know, it, children should not be depending on farm and stuff. So... Basically, he didn't want his son to be, you know, like him. So, yeah. When did you first come to the U.S.? Was I came here when I was 18. 18? So, yeah. So how many years ago was that? Uh, it was, I, I've been here almost six and a half years. Okay. Yeah. What do you do when you're not working for fun? Um, I basically don't have any life. I either drive or sleep or cook food what do you cook uh it's called uh um, dal yeah 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 do you know dal that? Uh -huh, dal yeah. <laughs> yeah i know 
Anna, right? Yes. Oh my goodness, it's interesting. Like you yeah. know what I'm talking about. You know what's funny? This is uh -huh. um, when I was there. Uh -huh. There was something about the. I I was a student with women and men, uh -huh. and for some reason, when we ate dalbat, which uh -huh. is dal and rice, it's like when we ate dalbat, um, all of the women gained weight, uh -huh. and so we started calling it uh, bot butt. Because we, because <laughs> wow. we were all gaining weight in our hips. <laughs> so that's what I think about when I think that of Dalba. <laughs> that is so funny. I love it. Oh, yeah. Do you think you'll like when you think about your life in like ten years? Mm -hmm. what, do you, what do you picture? Like, what do you hope for? Uh, in ten years, I think I'll myself having a business. What kind of business we thought? Um, probably gas station or you know something that generates money. Yeah. Yeah. Why did you Why did you want to be a nurse when you were thinking about going? Because to I and I really wanted to help people so bad, but I guess that you know I chose the wrong career. Maybe you know I didn't know how to learn right. So or maybe I don't know what what was the worst part I did to you know to be unsuccessful in school you know since I didn't become a nurse I think the lady that I'm gonna marry with she's gonna be a nurse for sure and she's gonna help our community out that's what you'd like yeah you're on the market for a nurse uh-huh uh -huh. <laughs> yeah I'm gonna get married with the nurse from <laughs> Nepal <laughs> When do you think you'll get married? Uh, probably planning this summer, Anna. This summer? This summer. Like in a few months? Uh huh. Have you met? Do you know who no, you're gonna marry? I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's strange, but I don't know who it's gonna be. Yeah. So are, right now, are your parents? Are they like talking and trying to find potential mm -hmm. partners mm -hmm. for you? Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. while how do you, I, how do you I, feel uh -huh. about that? That's soon. <laughs> I don't know, and like, you know, what they say is parents are always experienced people. Yeah. So they know what they are doing. Do you think your parents have a good marriage? Uh-huh. They've been married for, well, I don't know what to tell you because my mom, she left me when I was five because, you know, it was a situation where she had to choose between keeping herself safe versus being with us. So she chose to leave family. You know how, it, how like in Nepal, like we, we do not, they do not have, like women do not have that much rights Yeah. as do, they do have up here. So like, you know, if I was in Nepal, I can do whatever I want, beat her. You know, more like domestic violence, like the men can do whatever the man wants to do. Yeah. So she chose to leave family and then just for the sake of her children, my mom more like she chose her own sister to get married with my dad. And that way, you know, my dad is happy because he wanted to get double marriage. Like uh -huh. they are really not satisfied with just one woman. Oh, I see. Yeah. And um, do you have a close relationship with your mother? Um, not really, because I haven't seen what she looks like. Oh, you haven't seen her since you I were a kid. I haven't, because like you know, you're 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 afraid of your dad, like what he's gonna do. Because, I mean, I really respect my dad, but I hate him too, because he's the one who brought us up here. Because you know, no Nepalese can think to come to America. It's it's very expensive. Like for capital city people, it's not that big. But for us from rural side, it's it's more like you know dream to go to America. So I respect my dad for bringing us up here, but I also hate him because we we hadn't seen our mother what she looks like. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. And then, but you feel. Um do you feel nervous to get married? Oh, kind of nervous and excited. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Is it your father who will pick out your yes. your wife? Uh -huh. What kind of husband do you think you will be? 
do you do you think that you will um do you think you'll be the kind of husband that your father was like no definitely not because once you get married like women should be respected and that's what i think like once you get married you should be good with it for the rest of your life mm. yeah if things doesn't work out then you really need to solve it but getting married and beating up the women it's really not the thing it it's not being a man that's madam i am so glad that you did my podcast uh, and i appreciate it of course <laughs> Thanks also to Ahmad, Matthew, Evelyn, and Jeremy, as well as Anna, Mukti, Rizwan, Sharad, Emiliano, and Charles, for letting us get into your cars with microphones and for the rides. Death, Sex, and Money is a listener-supported production of WNYC Studios in New York. I'm based at the Center for Investigative Reporting in Emeryville, California. The team includes Katie Bishop, Emily Botine, and Andrew Dunn. Thanks to Jillian Weinberger for her help on this episode. Our intern is Moncapur Conte. The Reverend John Delore and Steve Lewis wrote our theme music. I'm on Twitter at Anna Sale. The show is at Death Sex Money. And if you like what we're doing here, if this show is important to you, please chip in with your fellow listeners to support it. Go to deathsexmoney.org slash donate. We gave out Death, Sex, and Money stickers before we got out of the car each time. I think Evelyn was the most into it. Uh, that's sex and money. That's Ooh. sex and money. The money part I like. But that uh, later on. <laughs> <laughs> I know I, 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 I want to meet my lord, but not yet. <laughs> I'm Anna Sale, and this is Death, Sex, and Money from WNYC.